the staff playoffs on ABC that's in the Bruins. She's a go team elimination. Today, they move on. Welcome to the Stanley Cup Playoffs on ABC in our New York studios. I'm John Saunders. We'll get you out in the studios. I'm John Saunders. We'll get you out to the Devils in the Bruins in just a moment. But first, let's look at the East and see how they line up. As you know, that game is coming up later in just a few moments. And Washington and the New York Rangers. The Rangers swept their way in, beating the Islanders. The Capitals, the big surprise, they knocked off the Pittsburgh Penguins. Between periods, we will talk with the head coach of the New York Rangers, Mike Keenan, as he try and brings his very experienced squad onto the Stanley Cup Final. But up next, Ray Bork and the Boston Bruins try and get their way to that Eastern Conference Final as they face the New Jersey Devils. It's coming up. If you're looking for a reliable place to service your car or truck, it's a Pep Boys Automotive Super Center. Their ASC certified technicians are here when you need them, day or night, even on Sunday. Come to Pep Boys and drive away happy. To soothe the discomfort of athlete's foot, Desinex does it. But to kill the fungus, Desinex does it. Only Desinex has UDA, proven to both soothe and cure athlete's foot. To soothe and cure, Desinex does it all. So your little brother's joining us, huh? He's not so little anymore. All right, now let's move it! Three, two, oh. Needs what, 19? Wait, setting. 540, F-14. Jeff's landing planes. Four gear lens set. No. $40 million jets. Today's Navy. High-tech training that takes you only one way. Full speed ahead. Primary's off. Good job, Don. You and the Navy! Jeff? See? Uh, he's not so little anymore. Full speed ahead! Next play is Flash 87 Blue. Quiet! Please, I'd like to try this thing. Call home. It's nice to be recognized, finally. Call now for the revolutionary voice-activated phone card. Only from Sprint. You know what I like about hockey? I like that everybody gets to carry a stick. I like the skating, the scoring, the passing. I like that you don't shake hands with your opponent until the very end of a playoff series. I like the Zamboni. I like the hitting. I love the Bruins. <laughs> <laughs> I like how they throw a dead octopus on the ice in Detroit during the playoffs. I like that when somebody does something bad, they go to the box. I like the fact that right now I'm on a breakaway with the greatest player of all time. I don't like the fact that he's not passing to me. Come on, Hog. The Stanley Cup Playoffs on ABC. Brought to you by Miller Lite. Great taste, less filling. Can your beer do this? BMW, the ultimate driving machine. And Sprint. We've got everything you need, local, long distance, and cellular, to let you be there now. Welcome back, everybody. This is the second round, game one. Brian Smolinski, the rookie, and Bobby Holik, the veteran, on the faceoff, and we are underway. The Devils... And the Boston Bruins, Eli Afraidy, working on defense with Ray Bork, his teammate, and he sends it in. Martin Brodeur, the 21-year-old star for the New Jersey Devils, who had that magnificent series against Buffalo as they beat the Sabres in seven games. Iafredi hacked at it up to Smolensky, not out of the zone. Holy had it, lost it. Stewart runs it out. Far side, Devils get it back. Stevens up and cleared into the zone by McKay. Ray Bork around the near side. These teams have met only once in the playoffs before, and uh, that was in 1988, the semifinal game won by Boston in seven games. Near side for Reed. Reed trying to hit Adam Oates. It was deflected into the zone by Lemieux. Claude Lemieux has had an outstanding playoff series thus far this year for the New Jersey Devils. He and Stefan Richer can be their two biggest offensive weapons when they are going. We just saw another weapon that Claude Lemieux likes to use. At 215 pounds, he can bang people all over the place. And the Bruins have good size on defense, but Lemieux can move over them. He'll be out there with Chorsky and Carpenter on that line for the Devils. And uh, with us today is Al Morgandy. Well, you know, the Bruins, again, got by Montreal to get to this round. They kind of knocked them off regularly the last few springs, but there it goes from the past with the Bruins in Montreal, and they're in the flesh now behind the New Jersey bench. How about Jacques Lemire and Larry Robinson? How about on their roster, Stefan Richet and, Lou and Lemieux? Yeah, it used to be club to hockey Montreal. Now maybe they have to worry about 
club to hockey New Jersey. Well, I, I watched John Lemire and Larry Robinson leave Boston Garden after a series, banged up, bloodied, bruised, but with the series victory a number of times. This guy has not coached a lot of hockey games, front office with the Montreal Canadiens before coming back to the Devils. He had only coached a, a year plus with Montreal in past seasons. He's behind the bench and has had a very successful year. For Brian Sutter, the intensity was there. He's got his players believing they are the underdogs of the playoffs. Talking this morning to he and the, and the players, he says uh, he's talking to everybody in the hallway. You guys write us off. You guys write us off. Everybody wrote us off against Montreal. Everybody's writing us off against these guys. Keep That's, doing it. Keep doing it. That's exactly what he wants. That's what he's telling his players. And Al Iyer Brady, of all people, I'll tell you, he believes it. He saw me out there, looks at me, and says, Did you guys write us off too? I said, Al, you can't believe everything Brian tells you. <laughs> Cleared back to the front of the net, Reed's got it and sends it out of the zone. You know what's interesting is that both of these teams, at one point, trailed in their series by a game. With the Devils, it was game one. With the Bruins, they trailed three games to two. Wesley shot, deflected in front, behind the net. Good scoring opportunity, first chance of the game right there. Daniel Merwa was in front. Merwa still with Reed. Reed, wraparound on Brodeur, who made the save. Stefan Riche comes away with a puck. Riche over to Tom Charsky, near side. Charsky! Good save by Casey, who came up, cut the angle down. He was way out of his net because he knew that David Shaw was cutting off the angle. But Charsky, with his wheel, top speed guy, Charsky is number one in the devil. Boy, can he fly. Reborn, Vyacheslav Fetisov sends it through center. Fetisov's season was supposed to have been done before the end of the regular season. The veteran being told he was not going to play again. But he came on in the final couple of games of the playoffs against Buffalo to solidify a defense that was struggling a bit. John McLean in front had it knocked away. Bruins will break it out. Two on two break the other way for Boston. Jordy Roberts, the veteran, they get it into the zone. Offside, Donato bringing it in. Great to have you with us here on ABC, the Stanley Cup playoffs. Hey, the Miss Perfect pageant. Yeah. We're watching hockey. Miller Lite presents the Miss Perfect Face Off. Okay, Bob, Miss Georgia goes to the corner. She plays the price. Here's the puck coming loose by Chuck. She scores. Brought to you by Miller Lite. If you can combine great taste and less filling, you can combine anything. Oh, that'll be smashing two minutes for Miss Congeniality. Bad call. Good beer. Great taste, less filling. Can your beer do this? <laughs> surprised what a BMW convertible is going for these days. The new 318i. Face-off will come outside the devil's end of Martin Brodeur. Paul Stewart is our referee for this game. Pat DePuzo and Randy Mitten are working the lines with him. Face off one back, Billy Garen. Nita Meyer drops it into the zone. There's Scott Stevens, who will be an imposing figure in this series. Into the corner, Billy Garen. Garen, who had an outstanding year, but did not have a very good first round as he did not put one in the net for the New Jersey Devils against Buffalo, but he is a threat. Hughes brings it out by Zalapuka. Hughes moving it in. His shot, Brodeur, makes the save. And it's cleared up and by Ray Bork. Bounced off the bench, players. So that will draw the whistle. Joel Tenders today, the veteran, 32-year-old John Casey, were in his spot with an outstanding series against Montreal as he won three, lost two at a 2-2-7 goals against. Oh, he was good when he had to be. And how good do you think Martin Brodeur had to be against Buffalo? The New Jersey Devils, in seven games against the Sabres, scored a grand total of 14 goals. Twice they were shut out, and yet they won the series. So when you say something about Billy Garrett, which is an accurate statement that Billy Garrett tailed off offensively, boy, you go up and down the Devils list, not much production yet. They don't care. They'll get the production as they need it. What a defensive battle. Shot on Brodeur right off the face-off circle, and he hangs on to it. Joseph Stumple. Stevens will do a lot of that, clearing out in front on Glenn Murray. And that's something that the Montreal Canadiens could not do against the Boston Bruins. There is no question the Devils defensemen are far bigger, far stronger than the Canadian defensemen. Glenn Murray is one of the bigger forwards for the Boston Bruins, so he has to do something that really kind of maximizes his strength, which is his physical size. 
Murray had two goals, two assists in that seven-game series against Montreal. Talking about size. Yeah, here's the difference. The, the 12 forwards that played the most for their respective teams in the first round, 5'11", 189 for the Bruins, 6'1 and a half, 202 for the New Jersey Devils. That's 13 pounds a man across the board. It may not seem like a lot, but when it's man after man after man that is 13 pounds bigger, that's a lot by hockey standards. Uh, that's a lot, and the Devils will use that size. Dostorsky and Reed do battle along the boards, poked away from Riche. Picked up by Bobby Carpenter, who sends it into the zone. Carpenter out there with uh, Riche, and Bernie Nichols will be out on the line here. Nichols coming back after rib problems that kept him out. He's an offensive threat for these New Jersey Devils, and Adam Oates is for the Bruins. Flipped away from him by Chorsky. Near side, Reed tried to hold it in. Carpenter got it up. And the Devils will regroup at center ice. Stevens stripped of the puck, comes back to get it. Scott Stevens, puck checked away. Played by Riche at center ice. Drop it back the other way. Scott Stevens, big defensively, fifth among defensemen in scoring with 78 points during the regular season. And a veteran who loves to use the body, as Bill said, at the top of the broadcast around the league this year when we've asked people who's the hardest hitter. His name, Scott Stevens, comes up continually. I afraid he clears it into the zone. Back to get it is Bruce Driver. Driver cleared it around for Jim Dowd. And Dowd out of Brick, New Jersey, just down the street. He's got a lot of family on hand here. Martin Brodeur holds it up behind that. Brodeur had hardly played any National Hockey League games before this season. Took over for Chris Ferreri as the number one goaltender as the season rolled along. And Brodeur was just magnificent. Second half of the year and of the playoffs. Dowd's got the putt. Dowd turning it up, cleared it out to center. Garen, Garen to Zelopukin. Larry Zelopukin, who shot off the blocker. Casey had a dribble behind him, but over the net. Wesley curled it around, and it's out of the zone. Taken back by Driver. Lost in center. This could be, should be, a defensive battle in this series. Both these teams love to play the body. And it's especially the Devils. They trap in the neutral zone. They try to slow other teams down. The Bruins are a far greater attack team. They try to pressure the puck with their forwards just about everywhere on the ice. Bernie Nichols, John McLean, shot save made by Casey right through the screen. Shot from the point goes wide by Tommy Avalon. Good chance right there for the Devils on the turnover that Nichols created into the zone. Smolenski down the middle. Smolenski scores! The rookies continue to pump for the Boston Bruins. Ryan Smolenski's third goal this playoff year. But Chuck Lemaire will not like this goal because the Bruins did something against the New Jersey Devils that they're not supposed to be able to do. Remember, we talked about closing up the neutral zone. First of all, one long pass, then another long pass. People wide open in the neutral zone, and Brian Smolinski cool as a cucumber off the post. This has been the story for the Boston Bruins, folks. They've got five rookie forwards in the lineup. They have been playing like three- and four-year veterans. Brian Smolinski made that look like a practice goal. Big off the post, one nothing. Out of Michigan State, Smolinski gets the goal, a one nothing lead. John McLean is the scoring line for the Devils. With McLean, Nichols, and Lemieux out there. They're not gone out. McLean held it in. For these two teams, Claude Lemieux leads the Devils in playoff scoring. Four goals, two assists. McLean's got three and three. Scott Stevens is one and five for the Devils' leaders. The Bruins led by Ray Borg, one and five. Their goal scorers, Ted Donato, three. Adam Oates has had three. And both of them have picked up five points. Now Brian Smolenski's got three. Smolenski, a six-point playoff year so far. Smolenski moving in again. Brian Smolenski drops the pass behind him for Stevie Hines. Centered in front. Stevens was there and knocked it away. Corey Millen picks it up. Must mention here, Don Sweeney, a primary defenseman for the Bruins, is out of the game, has an injured arm. So they are short. One of their top 4D in Don Sweeney. 1-0 lead in this game, 5-0-2. Smolenski getting it from Hines and Stewart. This is the one that put the Bruins on top. BMW convertible is going for these days. The new 318i. Hey, gourmet cooking. Welcome. Put the wrestling back on. Gourmet cooking. Let's watch both. 
Noodle. They are cooking now, Bob. Here's the flip. Brought to you by Miller Lite. If you can combine great taste and less filling, you can combine anything. What a pen. What a beer. Great taste, less filling. Well, one of the reasons the Boston Bruins are getting great mileage from their kids like Brian Smolinski and Freddie Knips here is Mike O'Connell, NHL veteran who now coaches the minor league team for the Bruins in Portland in the American League. He has these guys pretty well through and ready by the time they get to Boston. Mike O'Connell mentioned as the man who may take over for Mike Milbury as the new GM in Boston. Korski to Riche, Riche. Oh, there's a save that may tell us something about John Casey. He not only played that, he played that with a little pizzazz, a little extra just to say, try it again. Our Molson Ice League leaders, those who take the shots. We've got some in this game. Look at that, Molson on top in this year's playoffs. John McLean is third, and Stefan Riche tied for fourth. So three of the top four are in this game. We're putting the puck on net by Molson Ice. Cleared up by Reed. Niedermeyer drops it back. Niedermeyer and Stevens for defensive pairing, and offside Bruins. Daniel Marwa was well into the zone. Well, I think the save definitely tells us a couple of things about John Casey. First of all, yes, he does have a good glove hand. Number two, he looks just as cool in this game so far as he did in Game 7 against the Montreal Canadiens two days ago. Casey faced 179 shots in that series. Boston outshot Montreal 254 to 179. Boston gets a lot of shots on goal. Their motto is shoot till it hurts. And one they do. Of, one of the things that, that we're going to be watching from the devil's standpoint and from a John Casey standpoint is how John Casey moves out to protect against the long shot. Montreal got two goals on him late in the game. They were from the blue line. John Casey had both feet standing right in the blue part, right in the crease, instead of being aggressive coming out. He is more aggressive on the close shots usually than he is on the long shot. We'll watch it. Stefan Riche, who's got a great shot. Riche moving into the corner. Wesley was on him. He got a pick from Chorsky. Shot, a save made by Casey. What a pick by Tom Chorsky, who took Wesley out on the near side boards. And Riche's had some chances. Next week on ABC Sports, tea time in Texas for golf's greats. It'll be the top stars as the senior tour hits the links in the Liberty Mutual Legends of Golf. Coverage begins at 2.30 Eastern, 1.30 Central, and 3 Pacific. ABC's Wide World of Sports in the first leg of the Chrysler Triple Crown Challenge from Churchill Downs, the Kentucky Derby, live Saturday here on ABC. Here's the pick you were talking about, Gary. Look at Riche, and that wasn't a rolling pick. Chorsky was in perfect position. He just had to stand there. Look at him. Yeah, a little rear end action there, but not enough for Paul Stewart to call. And in our referee, Paul Stewart, we've got a guy that's an ex-player. He likes to watch him play out there. He's not going to call that little stuff. Murray, shot went wide. Murray's had an outstanding playoff for Boston. Kenny Danico knocked it away. Bruins able to hold it into the point. Shaw, Shaw moving in the shot. This is a terrific play by David Shaw. Kenny Danico, number three of the Devils, was stuck between a rock and a hard place. He had two guys, one right in front of Brodeur and Shaw barreling in from the point. What do you do? Well, he hedged, tried to play the middle, and blocked the shot. Here comes the pass from Stumble out. It went through a crowd. There's Danico, number three. Now watch him. He knows he's got a guy behind him. Here comes David Shaw. This was the genius of the play, the fake by David Shaw. It didn't look like this last part of it was screen, Gary. It just it looked like it caught Marte Brodeur on the short side. Simple shot. And Beat him. Bruins take a 2 to nothing and a surprising 2 nothing lead early in this game with 12.29 to go in the first. Shots are 7-4 to four in favor of Boston, and that shoots the Hurts offense is starting to hurt the New Jersey Devils. Played behind the net by Tommy Avalon. The 1-2-2 two, two being used by the Bruins on defense. Stood right in at that time. Gordy Roberts intercepted and cleared it in. Tommy Avalon comes back to get it. The Boston Bruins up 2-6 early on. Murray holds it in for Boston. They're up playing a stumble. Wide, and Murray almost had it. Gordy Roberts saved. Right back to Roberts as Brodeur kicked it away. The Bruins out skating, out playing the New Jersey Devils right now. Stumble fanning on that one. The Bruins dump it in again. No question in my mind, the Devils look flat right now. And they should be expected to look flat. After playing a combined 
seven game series that equal about nine against Buffalo. For that huge overtime they had in game six. Held in on the far side by Stevens. Alapukin back to get it. Alapukin who went up the boards. Smolinski for the Bruins. Boston up 2-0, their second goal at 7.22. Donato, shot, just wide. Smolenski was going for his second of the game. Brian Smolenski's chance, that goes off Bork's stick. 7.22, Shaw from Stumple and Murray. First of this series, third of his playoff career for David Shaw. You know, one of the sure signs the New Jersey Devils are flat is people open in the offensive zone down low. The New Jersey Devils practice three on three down low which means in front of their goaltender inside the faceoff dog they practice that all year long to work on their defensive coverage when you see people standing around on offense with nobody beside them you know the devils are flat scott niedermeyer starts it out niedermeyer for john mcclain tipped in on casey who has trouble with that one and decides to hang on 10 41 to go first game round two bruins up two nothing hundreds of miles to the north and 30 degrees south of zero lies Canada, blasted by wind, buried by snow, and filled with ice. Molson Ice. Ice brewed by North America's oldest brewery to be a few degrees colder, a few degrees bolder, yet smooth as ice. Molson Ice. From the land where ice was born. Boston Bruins have produced not only with their forwards but also with their defensemen. Here's how the David Shaw goal started. Glenn Murray with a big effort in behind, but he got help here from number 22, Joseph Stumpel. Watch number three, Ken Danico, out to block the shot. Murray with the jump. He didn't want to get hit with a low. Simply beat Martin Brodeur down low to the short side. Just did not have the angle on that one. L.I. afraid he gets it in. Carpenter was all over. The rookies we were talking about, Smolenski, Stewart, Stumpel, three of them, they've all picked up a point in this game. Smolenski a goal, Stewart and Stumpel an assist. You know, the man that may not be surprised by this start is Jacques Lemaire, the head coach of the New Jersey Devils. He was quoted as saying before the seventh game was played between his Devils and the Buffalo Sabres, whoever wins this series will be at a disadvantage in game one of the next series simply because of the equivalent of over eight games that the two teams had to play. Game six went into four overtimes in Buffalo before the Sabres finally won it. Tired bunch. And you get tired physically, yes. So when your focus has been on one team, you get tired mentally. Raymore! Save made by Brodeur. Tipped over the glass. The New Jersey Devils this season were second only to the New York Rangers on the year. 47, 25, and 12. Here at home, they were magnificent. They finished second in the league in home record at 29, 11, and 2, and they outscored the opposition here 160 to 99 at home. This team gave up 141 even strength goals. They're an awesome team. Awesome team defensively. The reason nobody knows about the New Jersey Devils is players and teams make their names in the playoffs, and this franchise here in New Jersey has only been past the first round once, have been before this season. This is only the second time ever past the first round. Last four years. They've been in the playoffs. They've lost the first round. Bobby Holding drops it out the center. Ray Bork tips it away from Corey Millen. Millen getting a start today. The Devils scratching Alexander Seamack. Mike Caluso had been playing out of today's game. Jason Smith, the defenseman, out with Kapisov getting the playing time. Hard hit put on by Ken Danico. Kenny Danico, one of the most excitable players to nation, got so excited in that overtime game in game six, he got benched by his coach. Doc Lemaire said, you got to come out. You're too hyper. I can't have you in there. So Ken Danico had to sit and watch part of that game. Held on to by Casey, the bouncing puck, and he won't let go as Randy McKay batted it at him. Right up on their face. Take a look at these teams and how they ended up in the second round against one another. 
The Bruins against Montreal and Patrick Waugh coming away with a victory. Bork, their leader. The Devils against Buffalo winning also in seven. And you see what a defensive battle that was. Just 13 goals in seven games given up by Martin Brodeur. And we have mentioned that the Devils felt that they would be at a disadvantage because of the equivalent of eight games they had to play. Brian Sutter's team, for that matter, had to play Friday night as well. So that evens the playing field to a degree as well. The Boston Bruins had to travel here yesterday. So it's not as if the Bruins have a tremendous advantage just because the Devils had a, a very difficult series against the Sabres. Bruins had a reasonably tough series themselves and only ended Friday night. Stewart won the faceoff against Dowd, but Dowd chases it down into the corner to Billy Guerin. Guerin, Dowd, and Zelopuka. Stewart, what a series he had. Finishing up the Tisov shot partially blocked. Fred Kinnickshear's got it. Kinnickshear, one of the rookies on a St. Clouds hockey program, drops that one in. There's Slava Petisov. Stewart runs into him. Stewart's leveling everything and anything that moves. I wouldn't even uh, want to get in front of him if I had on the right colors. He might knock you down, too. Petisov behind the net. Stewart played in three games, the last three games against the Canadiens, after not starting in that series, and played so well, Ryan Sutter could not take him out of the lineup and doesn't want to. He, he was that dominant physically. He simply ran over people. He's 190 pounds. That's deep in size. He's 5'11". He's not big by NHL forward standards. He can't be in the power forward category with that size. But he literally steamrolled people against Montreal. Human cannonball at work out there. Up along the near side boards, Donato got it out. Intercepted by Anita Meyer. Anita Meyer sends it back in. One of the fine young defensemen. The National Hockey League, Scott Niedemeyer, a real star now into the future. John McLean was already offside on the dump in by New Jersey. Shots 13-5 in favor of the Bruins, who have the two to nothing lead. Part of the Niedemeyer family of hockey players. He looks about 10 years older with that playoff goatee going out there, doesn't he? Well, the players have gone to the goatee. It used to be playoff beers, but now since goatees are in fashion, the players simply go to the goatee. One big advantage, not nearly as hot. When you, you start playing in April and May, a lot of the Bruins have shaved theirs off after beating Montreal in Game 7. A lot of them shaved off. Now Ray Bork, he's got the playoff beard going. Dave Reed has left his on, but Adam Oates has shaved his off. I afraid he has gotten rid of his as well. But Al I afraid he can throw his back in about four hours. Yeah. <laughs> Meyer Brady sends it into the zone. Smolenski at 5.02 and Shaw at 7.22. The two goals in this game, giving Boston the 2 to nothing lead. As the Devils looking for some way to get enough ice here as Boston has pinned them in with that four-checking game. One way to do it is to rush it. And that man can. Niedermeyer got it in. Near side the Charsky center. Ruins right there. Ray Bork covers it up, sends it out. Casper two on one break. Reed coming. Reed with Merrill. Missed it by a country mile. And it rebound comes back to center. That's one of those he doesn't want to see again. That was about eight feet over the net as he tried to roof it over the door. A really good play by Stevens who was back. I and mean, he took the pass away. I mean, he sides it up. You've got Merrill on one side, Reed on the other. You let Reed take the shot because Merrill's the better offensive player. You saw the strength of Stefan Richet right there. He got by one at Bruins, but he could not get by Reed the second. Paired out by John Casey. Up back to the middle, Hines cleared it over to Adam Oates, who sends it in. Kenny Danico giving chase. Danico gets there. Played by Bruce Driver. Seven minutes to go, first period. Game one of the second round, and the Bruins have a 2 nothing lead. These teams during the regular season series ended up splitting it 2-2, two and two, and a penalty coming up first of the game with the tripping call on the Bruins. And the New Jersey Devils will get the power play as Zelopoukas get tripped up behind at the net. And a power play coming up. El Morgani. Well, Phil mentioned the goatees the Bruins were growing. I talked to Adam Oates before the game. He wants a four-game sweep for uh, a real bizarre reason. He says, this thing is real itchy. Had to shave it off after the last series. He's going to start him anew every, after each series. He said, look, seven's too much. It's just awful feeling. I want to get this thing over with quick and get rid of this as soon as possible. I wouldn't be betting on that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, the pain that these guys have to endure. It is. It's the, awful. The it? pain of the itchy beard. <laughs> I've been there before. And yes, when you're not used to it, it is really uncomfortable. Adam Oates, third leading scorer in the league during the regular season. And third in assists, heading up the Boston attack. Power play. This is the part of the Devils that has not been good during the regular season, but came out of the playoffs at power play. They finished 17th during the regular season. So they're 6 to 32 in the playoffs against Buffalo. Tommy Avalon scores!
Now, the one thing that has contributed to the improvement in the Devils' power play is their sense of when to shoot. Bernie Nichols got this one, and he saw a screen. See, he's surveying the situation. He finally moves to the top of the circle. He knows he's got a screen set up, so never mind the pass. My shot's as good as anybody's. And he just ripped it by John Casey. That's the second goal in this game on the short side. John Casey gave him what looked like a whole bunch on the short side. Big power play goal against a Boston shorthanded unit that was number one during the regular season. No, Gary, that, that might not. That replay didn't even look like there was that much of a screen. Maybe Casey gave him so much that Nichols said, you know what, I don't even have the screen. I still can blow it by him because it looked like Casey gave him a bunch over there. A lot of room. Bernie Nichols. Who they want to be scoring, got that one. Murray being held off to see if Stevens were pushing at one another behind the play. And Randy McKay moved in to separate them. Now. Al Bernie Nichols with the goal there. Bernie Nichols, everybody plays hurt in the playoffs. He's got some cartilage torn around his rib cage. Has been playing with a flak jacket and has been freezing the injury before the game. So like everybody else in these playoffs, he's really playing hurt. They hit the right spot with the needle today because that one didn't seem to hurt that big blast that he took. And if you've got sore ribs, yes, getting hit will hurt, but shooting is the is right there, second in line for what gives you the most pain. Because you have to twist your body. There's a whole lot of a torque when you shoot it the way Bernie Nichols shot it on that one. Bernie Nichols, who saw his 36th career goal first of this playoff year. Lemieux and McLean on the power play, and the New Jersey Devils have scored their seventh. Power play goal of the playoffs is there now seven for 33. McKay brings it up for the Devils back to Bobby Holik. Holik winds up and it's lost by Glenn Wesley. Puck rolled all the way around the board's far side. Two to one Boston lead. Kicked away. Wesley lost that one to Corey Millen. Leaves it for Holik. Holik, Millen, and McKay. Delayed offside call. Wesley's hurt. Bet he is. Wesley caught the knee. Is down on the ice. He came head on, face to face with the man that we have talked about as being the top hitter in the game today, Scott Stevens of the New Jersey Devils. And as of right now, it is Stevens one and Glenn Wesley nothing. We mentioned that Don Sweeney is out of the game. He is one of the big four defensemen for the Boston Bruins. Glenn Wesley is another one of the big four. They can't afford to lose Wesley. Scott Stevens, throughout his career, has leveled a lot of people. And Wesley is the latest. Take a look here. Stevens moving the puck up. There's Wesley trying to put the hit on him. Look at that. I mean, that's a pretty good straight up hit. Georgia goes to the corner. She plays the right. Here's the puck coming loose by Chuck. She scores! Brought to you by Miller Lite. If you can combine great taste and less filling, you can combine anything. Oh, that'll be smashing two minutes for Miss Congeniality. Bad call. Good beer. Great taste, less filling. Can your beer do this? He got up and left the ice under his own power, but very oh, slowly. Yeah, but that, that sound of... Ooh, that you may have heard had to be Glenn Wesley. We think the wind was knocked out of him. Wesley's elbow was tucked in, and Scott Stevens just rammed him. Now, remember, Glenn Wesley is the guy that saw Stevens coming and was trying to line him up. Stevens just picked him up at the last second. That's how strong and stable Scott Stevens is on his skates. Now, I afraid he saved me by Brodeur. And ironically, those two guys, Stevens and Wesley, are both playing in their 100th career playoff game. Some way to congratulate one another. <laughs> you know, Gary, you mentioned that Scott Stevens picked up 78 points this year. That's his top offensive year of his career. What is interesting is that even though he had 112 penalty minutes this year, that's the fewest in his 12-year career. He has always been at least over 112 minutes. I'm not sure there's a correlation there, but Scott Stevens plays so hard and is such a gladiator out there. He doesn't go looking for it ever, does he? He just puts out fires when they happen. I think it would be impossible for him to play a season under 
under 100 minutes just because of the way he competes. He wouldn't know how to do that. Right. But, and it just doesn't happen. You're right. On the boards, Adam Oates, I afraid he able to hold it in. Here's Marwa, kicked it away. Turn around, Reed. Save made. Reed got a lot on that turnaround shot. Martin Brodeur knocked it away. Bruins are out shooting the Devils 16 to 6, but it's a 2 1 lead for the Bruins. Had been 2 0. The power play goal by Nichols getting the Devils on the board. Tommy Avalon, he has come along and playing all the games in the playoffs. Very strong end of the season for Avalon. Sent in by Petit off wide on Casey. Here's Lemieux. Rebound chipped away to the corner by Gordy Roberts. Good save by Casey. Three on two the other way for the Bruins. Smolenski is going to go. Tried for two. That one went off the blocker. John McLean picks it up on the near side, sends it out. Shaw sends it right back in. Martin Brodeur, 6'1", 205, only 21 years old. His record now 4-4 four and four in his career in the playoffs. He's had only one playoff game a couple of years ago against the Rangers for the Devils prior to this season. Well, the rookie's getting his chance and couldn't have been a much better start than he had against Buffalo. Cleared out of the zone. Bruce Driver's there. Driver sends it in. Driver's had a couple of goals for the Devils in this year's playoffs. Woody Roberts behind the net. Roberts had it chipped away. Dowd is back there in the forecheck. Rolls out to center. Driver over to Ken Danico. Danico there. Iron Man. Had a consecutive game streak end of this season with an injury, but you got to hold him out of the lineup. Hines lost it. Port knocked it away from Zellapuka. Danico. Billy Garen in for New Jersey. Garen centering pass off the board for Driver. Came outside the zone. Delayed offside call. There's the whistle. Billy Garen down behind the net on the touch. Well, you know, when you look at some of the players that have been here for a lot of years in New Jersey, Bruce Driver is one of them. Tenth year. Kenny Danico, tenth year. John McLean, tenth year. These guys have only been past the first round once prior to this year. And that's why getting to the second round for Kenny Danico and Bruce Driver and John McLean, the three senior New Jersey Devils, has special meaning for those guys. That's a lot of pro hockey without making it past the first round more than once. 20th year for the New Jersey Devils franchise. Looking to move on with a team that's a very impressive, strong, deep club. Aya Frady going behind the net. Aya Frady with a collision, and Randy McKay won't avoid one. He got hit by Stumpel. McKay came back to get the punch with a point. Stevens. Stevens over. Niedermeyer shot. Deflected. What a great save. Unbelievable save by Casey. That shot was deflected to the five hole, and how Casey got that, I'm not sure. And even when he got it, it looked like he was so far in the net, he was behind yeah. the line. I think it, this may be a matter of right place at the right time for John Casey, but, but this line has Corey Millen on it. Usually it has Mike Peluso, but it's a momentum line for the New Jersey Devils because it can change momentum so quickly. Puck finally got back to Scott Niedermeyer, and Corey Millen got his, his stick on it. Casey was moving the other way. He just was able to stop his movement enough to get his pad on it. But this is why this line changes momentum. Boom. Randy McKay, who at the blue line had challenged Brent Hughes to a fight, and Brent Hughes, much smaller guy, had skated away. McKay just ripped into Ally Afraidy behind the net. And that's how you change the momentum of a hockey game when you guys are up against it. Your team is up against it generally with the body. Yes, a goal can do it, but if you've got a line that can go out there and dominate physically with hits like that, then momentum comes your way. Stevens shot deflected by Riche wide. Tom Chorsky, Chorsky, Riche, and Bobby Carpenter. Carpenter saved by Casey. Bobby Carpenter, a former Boston Bruin who played in the Stanley Cup final series with these Boston Bruins, now working for the New Jersey Devils. Remains 2-1. Bruins on top. 2.51 left to go here in the first. You know, this is an, an amazing stat when I learned this, that in that four-overtime game that the Devils played in game six against the Buffalo Sabres, Bobby Carpenter took 61 face-offs. That is generally an average for an entire regulation game. There were a total of 152 in the game, and Bobby Carpenter took 61 of them in game six against the Buffalo Sabres. That is three games worth of work for most centers. I don't want to be negative towards him, but he lost 40 of those face-offs. I make that point because the Devils in face-offs against Buffalo really struggled. Right. They were outmanned on the draws, which can really make a difference in close games when you're trying to get offense generated off face-offs. What begs the point that 
why did he keep getting put back in there to take them? Because they don't have anybody else. Yes, you're right. No, exactly. That's a real problem. Bernie Nichols is the other guy who they'll use a lot, but they would rather have Carpenter take draws. Yep. Nichols can take face-offs, but because he was injured with those ribs, they didn't want to move him in jerk to that situation. So Carpenter ended up with a full work. Well, that's another thing that hurts ribs. Remember I mentioned getting hit, shooting, which puts a lot of torque in the body. Face-offs is right there with those for putting pressure on your ribs. I give Bobby Carpenter a lot of credit, though. He has become a very good defensive center. Yes, he is getting the opportunity to play that role here in New Jersey because there aren't many defensive centers in the organization. But this is a kid that just knew offense when he came out of high school right to the Washington Caps his third year of pro. He got 53 goals, so he went from an offensive player to a guy that salvaged his career by learning how to play deep. John McLean trying to run it into Don, cleared out of the zone by Stewart. You saw Nichols out there taking that last face off. Nichols remains out on the ice right now. Puts away Niedermeyer, Adam Oates had it and lost it. Tommy Avalon gets it back at center. He comes to the middle. Larry Nichols down the boards for John McLean. McLean taken out of the play by Adam Oates. Oates spinning it around the boards. Bruins having trouble getting out of the zone themselves now. The board checking of the New Jersey Devils is holding it in. Held on to by Casey on that shot from the blue line. He had a little struggle with that one sure that he had it, but he did. There again, John Casey stands way back in his net, and I'm not so sure that sometimes he isn't surprised by the long shot. He looked like he was standing right in the crease on this one. This was shot on the windup from six feet outside the blue line. Sure enough, I mean, well, he's, he's right in the middle of his crease. It really surprises me because he has, has a tendency to be overly aggressive, and that's something that the Bruins coaching staff, especially Tommy McVie, their assistant coach who works with the goalies, has worked on with Casey, but not staying back in those situations, staying back in breakaways and stuff like that. Down it goes, shot, save made, Billy Garrett shot that one wide. Casey played in uh, all four games during the regular season, went two and two against the Boston Bruins. That was regular season record, lifetime. Casey against Boston with 7, 6, and 1 to be his first playoff series against the Boston Bruins. In the playoffs, Casey 24 and 20 in his career. Casey was going to go after it, left it for Ray Bort. 31st playoff series for the veteran Ray Bort. Only Gord Roberts of the Bruins has been in more playoff games than Bork has. Near side for Garen. Garen comes to the middle with Zalaputin and Dowd. Billy Garen drops it. Larry Zalaputin back along the blue line. Drive. Bruce Driver. Devils jamming in front. Centered. Casey. Just deflected it and let it go. Give it to John. One minute left to go in the period. Scott Niedemeyer. Joseph Stumpel trying to knock that one down. Shaw comes back. Shaw's picked up one of the two goals for the Boston Bruins. Draw off the boards on the pass and offside as Stumpel had already moved in. 44 seconds left to go first period. Bruins 16 shots, doubles 12. How valuable was Martin Brodeur to the New Jersey Devils in the series against Buffalo? Well, you can say that he played well, but there is a thing in hockey called a three-star selection that happens at the end of every game. In five of the seven games, Martin Brodeur was one of the three stars. Dominic Hasek, who dueled Brodeur and ended up losing the duel, was one of the three stars in three of the seven games, but five of the seven. Brodeur was one of the stars. Both those goaltenders had 1-6-1 one, one goals against in that series. Dominic Pashik faced a lot more shots, 262 shots he faced. Comes to center, Bobby Carpenter, final seconds of this first period. Deflected off the boards for Todd Chorsky, Richet in front, tried to get it to him, cutting in, backhand to Carpenter, deflected off Casey, who got knocked down in the pucks underneath him. Why did he ever get knocked down, Gary? I don't know if he's hurt, but he just got sideswiped and crumpled immediately. Right into the knee, I think. Now he's all right. Bobby Carpenter was charging in and getting pushed from behind. Yeah. Bobby Carpenter was, I think, looking up by the time he made contact. Look at him, see, he's looking up, he got tripped, crunched right into John Casey's legs. Uh, John Casey, see, Casey actually was able to make the save looking down. That puck was in behind him. But Casey's so loosey-goosey, his muscles never seem tight in there. You saw him, when, when Carpenter hit him, he just sort of slipped down onto his face. I mean, he's, he's not a tense bone in his body. He was really cool in Game 7 against the Montreal Canadiens. He just stands there and lets it hit him. I mean, he is very efficient in the energy department. He never wastes any energy doing anything in there. 
Devils win the big draw here to get the chance. Stevens with shots they've made. There are those important face-off wins. Centering pass right through the middle. Bernie Nichols is trying to get set up. There's Nichols who won the draw. They won. They're around. Stevens holds it in again. Shot deflected in front. I afraid he's got it. Two different periods played here in the first. The first 10 minutes dominated by Boston. The second half by the Devils. Smolenski and Shaw had given Boston a 2-0 lead. Nichols got a power play goal to make it 2-1. Casey, good first period as the Bruins outshot the Devils. 17-15. John Saunders is going to be coming along. He'll update us on what's going on with another series that starts tonight after this from our ABC station. 